I'm going to start with yet another rendition of I Am A Field. Oh. As you see. <laughs> <laughs> I am a field, flushing as the late summer sun burnishes my golden stubble. Listen, I don't want your raptures. It's only a trick of the light. To tell the truth, I'm very tired and inclined to snap, to bicker over trifles remembering the clatter and batter of the overnight harvester keeping me from my rest. What used to take three men and a boy two weeks of solid work in the Indian summer sun, days of jokes, rivalry, beer, a peaceful slow harvesting like a gentle massage, very soothing to the soul, now brings new meaning to phrases such as riding roughshod and getting a good CMT. <laughs> I am a field. Tomorrow or the next day I will be stinking. People passing will hold their noses, turn their faces away from me as I flinch and itch and blush with shame for the filthy chemicals you have sprayed on me. Before I know it, in the fog of October or the frosty moonlight of November, you will come in the night and ravish me with your rattling machinery again. Three hours on the spreader, three hours on the sower, three hours on the harvester, job done. No more haystacks, no more gleaning, no more harvest home. I am growing into a clapped out old woman and I am angry. I never complained until now and now you won't listen. You want to wring every last ounce out of me, keep me fertile long past my youth by date. I am a field. I used to be home to flowers and bees. I sheltered small animals, gave delight to sunburnt farm girls drowsing in the buzzing noon times amid the chitter chatter of birds. I've had it with all of you and your shenanigans. I wish the wind would get up and blow as hard as it can and scatter my sorry soil into the atmosphere so nothing will grow on me, nothing will feed you. And you will find out that all worlds, including yours, come to an end. Libelula, <laughs> which is Latin for a dragonfly. Today I'm a dragonfly, flitting over the calm green waters of my pool, glinting iridescently in the sun. But yesterday I rode on the wings of a hawk, thrilled to the swoop for its prey. I saw you, humans, like beetles crawling, like shadows walking, lost in concrete. I saw a mouse loom large as an elephant. Its scream still rings in my ears. Years of my life I spent lolling like a cat on your sofa, preening myself, licking my whiskers, living, I believe, the life of Riley. I'm not sure where I'll turn up next. I'm tired of living. I might be a book lovingly fondled by kind hands, or a crazy patchwork quilt snuggling you warm in your bed. I might be a washing line braving the breeze in the garden, a hair on your head like a lemming about to fall off a cliff. Maybe I'll take a ride on a sad grey mare, all leather and jingling jangling bells. I'm a nagwell, an aerial set free, a will-o'-the-wisp, a speck in the wind. I'm a lallygagger, a here and therein. Catch me if you can. <laughs> um, I particularly like that poem because in one verse I quote from Shakespeare and Georgia Hare. <laughs> I want to go there, even with my iffy indigestion, hypertension, chronic pain. Even though I can't walk far or uphill or carry much, I want to go there. I'll manage with a grumble to adapt to nowhere to sit down and rest, outlandish bathroom arrangements, heat, hairpin bends, caves. Oh, I want to go there to the Europe of my youth when only flashes of open-eyed surprise pierced the dream of styles in sandals, of how do I look, of admiring glances from boys. 
How outre after dark and dismal home, the colours of abroad, the light. The sun coming up, going down, glittering morning, bleaching noonday, blinding afternoon. Now I could really take it in. Fairy castles, gingerbread houses, jewelled icons in ancient dim churches, the green gloom of Lavanese Vecht, Germans precision camping on the Lido, cave dwellers a hundred miles from Madrid, the rude watery jokes in the Archbishop's garden, the Bridge of Sighs, the miles and miles of Versailles, Edelweiss growing on precipices, oranges growing on trees. Let's go there, you and I, never mind the fears, the failings. Let's go there now, before it's even more too late. Even though I know it's gone, lost in mass tourism selfies, I want to go there. How much I want to go there. Yeah. This is Red Rebecca, a song of the Hebrides. That black pigma cloud shat in my water. All my bairns drank it, it was the death of my daughter. My wee white hen Camille strayed over on his croft. He took to her with a hatchet, no more eggs in my hen loft. They call me Red Rebecca because I'm consumed with rage. I do my work, I tend the beasts, forgiveness I can't manage. That long streak of piss MacIver took the books with me on Monday down on his knobbly knees on the floor as if I didn't keep the kirk on Sunday, praying to scare the red from me. He's away with a flea in his ear, as well as mud and worse on his trousers, to give MacLeod a taste of the fear. My milking coo took sick and died, and I just knew who it was who killed her, black-hearted heathen that he is, and wicked his tongue that felled her. I'd eaten poor headless Camille, and I buried my daughter that died. When I gutted fair Elspeth the coo, that was the day I cried. My man told me to hold my wish. What with him in a constant gloom, piety MacIver wringing his hands, an old mad, mad Margaret prophesying doom, I saw red. I saw red. Went hearing up the hill, swinging my new wetted cleavers, and in his filthy midden of a hoose, I sliced that pig into rashers. <laughs> Floor awash, walls spattered, myself died dead with his red with his blood. They call me Red Rebecca, because I did for that pig my cloud. The minister wailing and weeping, thundering out warnings of hell, turned the whole kirk against me with a shunning, candle, book and bell. But I don't give a rat's arse about them. I'm for an orgy of hating, watching Black MacLeod on a spit, turning and turning to bacon. They call me Red Rebecca for the flames of hell. As if they matter, the one thing I know is, anything's better than that Black Pig MacLeod shit in my water. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.